With exam season approaching fast, in this video we're going to have a look at as many useful tips to try and help and increase your grade. So let's solve this paper 3 question over here. We start off with a familiar circuit, the student uses the circuit to investigate the resistivity of a wire. Then we have some several different readings. So just how the student should have made these measurements. Check out the resolution of these readings. The only way that we can achieve that is via a micrometer or a vernier caliper. Since this is a two marker I'm going to bullet point two separate points. Point number one use a micrometer. So depending on what we're measuring we can say that we're going to measure the diameter at different points along the wire and then find the mean. If this was a sphere we can say that we're going to measure it in different directions. Part two, the student calculates the value of the diameter as d is equal to 0.455 plus or minus 0.005 millimeters. Explain how the student calculated the value of the diameter and its uncertainty from the data in the table above. My next tip is to pay careful attention to the command word. So in this case, this is explain. Additionally, whenever we're presented with a table, we should always be looking for an anomaly. So let's see, we have 0.460, 0.450455 aha we have spotted an anomaly so we need to explain how to calculate a couple of things number one is this value of 0.455 well this will simply be the mean of the remaining values and if I have a little bit more time left I might even just showcase that this is the case to calculate the absolute uncertainty anytime we're given a data set, we can use the rule that absolute uncertainty is half of the range. Just to illustrate this, the range is going to be the highest reading, which uh, after the exclusion of the anomaly is just going to be 0.460. Take away the smallest reading which is going to be 0.450 and then we're going to be dividing this by 2 which is going to give us 0.010 over 2 which is 0.005 as our absolute uncertainty in millimeters. This here is a show question. So the student varies the length of the wire of the circuit, records the current I using the ammeter. Show that this is actually true. When we're looking at show questions, we want to include all equal signs and have a clear logical format of our working. So I'm going to start off with the equation that, shall we start off with that the EMF is going to be equal to I, then external plus internal resistance. Let's rearrange this for the current, which is going to be equal to the EMF divided by R plus R. Because on the left hand side we have 1 over I, I'm just going to flip everything, so I'm going to get 1 over I is going to be equal to R plus R divided by the EMF. 1 over I will then be equal to R over the EMF plus R over the EMF. And now we're going to use the fact that the resistance is equal to to resistivity multiplied by the length divided by the cross-sectional area. In this case, our cross-sectional area is going to be the circular area of a wire, so we might as well just write that this is equal to pi d over 2 squared. And we're going to be really careful with this fraction, with a fraction inside of it, so that means that we are going to get essentially a factor of 4 up here, which is 2 squared over pi d squared like this. Okay, let's bring this back into the equation. One over i is gonna be equal to r over this, so it's gonna be four rho l over pi d squared multiply by one over epsilon. And we have shown this with clear steps, starting from the top, finishing right at the bottom. Now we've got a graph of 1 over i against the length. And as soon as we see these error bars, we're already thinking about the line of worst fit. 
If you're doing AQA, you might be calling them the steepest possible gradient, G max and G min potentially. Okay, we're given the value of the EMF, calculate the gradient of the line of best fit and use this to determine a value for the resistivity of the wire. You're not required to determine an uncertainty. Y equals MX plus C linear analysis is virtually guaranteed to appear in your A levels. It's one of the most fundamental skills, so we should definitely master this. The way I tend to do that is just by rewriting the equation and directly underneath I would write y is equal to mx plus c. And now if 1 over i is on the y-axis, if L is on the x-axis, then our gradient is going to be everything that is multiplying L or whatever is on the x-axis. In this case, it's going to be four times the resistivity, pi of sine and naught d squared. So we're just looking for the resistivity of the wire. So we can just rearrange for that essentially. We can say that four times the resistivity over pi epsilon d squared is equal to the gradient, which we're about to find. And let's just rearrange for the resistivity, which is going to be m pi epsilon d squared divided by 4. To get the resistivity, we will need the gradient. So let's do this. We're going to use the gradient of the line of best fit and we're gonna make sure that our gradient triangle is as large as possible. Before we even start taking any readings, I will also check the units of a graph, and in this case, the units are fine, but very often we might get prefixes or multiplication of certain factors within the plotting. So, always something to do. And the gradient is exactly equal to 5.0. How great is that? Okay, let's substitute some values. So the gradient was 5.0, multiply this by pi. We're given the value of the EMF, which is 1.45. D squared, we have to be careful, it's going to be 0 0.45. 5 millimeters, so this here will be times 10 to the power of minus 3. To avoid missing out squares, as soon as I see the square, I tend to put a little bracket here, and that ends up reminding me not to miss the square when I'm actually inputting this into the calculator. And then divided by 4, which is the same as multiplying it by a quarter. Also notice how I've done the entire rearrangement, I've not done any other separate calculations other than the gradient and rearranged, plugged in all the values, now I've gotten the result. This tends to help me minimize errors. And this here is going to give me around 1.2, multiply this by 10 to the power of minus 6 meters. Next one, determine a value for the internal resistance of the cell and its absolute uncertainty. Well, so far we have used the gradient, but now it's going to be time to actually use the intercept as well. So, um, we can say that R over the EMF is equal to our intercept C, and well, we can say that R is going to be C multiplied by the EMF. Let's see, no pun intended, what our intercept actually is. So each of the little squares is 0 0.05, which is going to make this reading 0.4. Okay, so the, our intercept is 0.4, so it's going to be 0.4 multiplied by the EMF, which is 1.45, which is going to give me 0.58 ohms for the internal resistance. To calculate the absolute uncertainty, there's a few different ways of potentially doing this. So we could either figure out the range and then divide it by two, but what I'm thinking is actually using those uncertainty values to determine the percentage uncertainty in my intercept. So we can say that the percentage uncertainty in the intercept, and we need to remember those formulas for the exam because they can appear particularly in paper three, but also potentially in other papers, depending which exam board you're doing. So the percentage uncertainty in the intercept C is gonna be C best, take away C worst over C best, multiply this by 100. K 
Okay, so where will the other intercept be? Um, this here is the best intercept. We're going to use this as our worst intercept. So this one here is just under 0.75, uh, but it, it's not quite 0.74 as well. Which one is it closer to? It's close to 0.75, so I'm just going to use this as 0.75. This here is our worst intercept, this here is our best. Okay, we can plug those back into the equation, so we're going to have plus or minus. These are all kind of the absolute value, which is 0.40, take away 0.75. 0.75, divide that by 0 0.40, and I'm just going to take the absolute value because I can see that this here will be the um, a negative value, but all uncertainty, so plus or minus either way. So what would that give us? 0 0.40, take away 0 0.75 over 0 0.40, and then I'm also going to multiply this by 100 over here as well. So this is around 87.5%. This is quite a large percentage. But there are two sources of uncertainties in our equation. So we have the uncertainty in C, the intercept. Now we also need to find and add the percentage uncertainty in the EMF. So we're given the value over here. And our final step will just be to do 0.05 five over 1.45 times that by 100 plus 87.5 percent. What is that going to give us? So that's around 90.948. Let's leave it at that. Percent, and that's the overall percentage uncertainty. Right at the end, we're going to do some rounding. Our first job will be to find 90% of our answer for R, and we need to be really careful with our rounding. So we could really only know our intercepts within, realistically, within one decimal place. So I'm going to give the final value up to one decimal place as well. So I'm going to say that r is going to be 0.6 plus or minus 0.5 ohms. All of these are really useful but they're definitely not sufficient. This is precisely why I filmed an entire video going over every single problem solving technique that I know and you should have a look at this video to make sure that you get the maximum possible grade. Click over here.